Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kidmaker Network, and welcome to another Monday Mail Call. Yes, we're doing it every week now. So much for my evil plan to do it every two weeks. But as you can see, yes, we got more boxes. <laughs> All right, well, um, we've got some interesting stuff in, though, I think, to take a look at. So uh, without further ado, let's start breaking stuff open, shall we? Uh, we got a box here from... <laughs> All right, well, we got a box here to me. Yeah, this was uh, returned, returned to me. We had a little bit of a, an address problem. Um, good thing to mention, because uh, this was actually my fault, but uh, no, actually this one wasn't my fault. Uh, we've had some issues with shipments over the years, um, but um, the person um, who was supposed to get this one, for example, doesn't know why he didn't get a notification to pick it up at his mail facility, but he didn't. Um, but we've had issues with like uh, sending addresses and then them not getting updated in my like mail or database and things like that. So just when you're um, requesting a kit, if you've uh, gotten kits from us in the past so that we would have your old address, make a big deal about, you know, oh, my, make sure my address has changed because, you know, it changed whatever six months ago. Even if we sent you something to your address, uh, that shouldn't really happen normally. But just, you know, kind of make a big deal about it because we, we don't like to get packages back and that cost 20 something, $30. How much does this cost to send? This cost uh, actually about $20 to send to Israel, and now it's back to us, so. But we still have these three things, so yeah, let's, uh, I didn't even notice that when I picked it up at the mail facility, that was mine. Uh, got a l really large box in here from, a heavy large box from AK uh, Interactive. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what they've sent us. I don't have my preview screen, which is really gonna kinda annoy me because well, I'm looking at the camera at least. I set my phone up behind my camera now, so I look at the camera lens. But uh, yeah, it's uh, unfortunately, I put it into 60 frames per second mode and for some reason, I guess it just doesn't like to do a preview once you actually put it on, oh, that's a lot of tape. Once you actually put it on uh, the, the uh, mode. There must be some boxes, uh, books, there must be, there's a box here. There must be some books in this box because it is heavy. Um, but there are lots of paints. So let's see, right off the bat, we've got US Army soldier uniform colors. Uh, these are World War II era. You can see the, uh, the uh, paratrooper, uh, the, uh, is that AA? That's not Screaming Eagles, is it? Uh, they have the Eagle thing. Uh, then we have Waffen SS Spring Summer Camouflage. And we've got uh, basics and equipment colors. Uh, this is one of the main sets that they've started to put out. Uh, and then following that up, uh, another main set, US Modern Vehicles Color Sets. So this obviously would go well with the new uh, Ming M1A2, which as you can see right over here, I do have, I've got, I've got, um, the video shot, I just need to do the photos and those should be out maybe, hopefully one of them will be out today. But for that, and the, and the Rye Field M1A2. Uh, then we've got 1936 to 39 Spanish Civil War colors. And uh, that looks good. Got dust and dirt deposits. This is part of an AFV series. And got three different, these larger paint bottles in it. We've got some Extreme Cleaner AK740 for extreme metal uh, for the ex for extreme metal color range. So they've made a special uh, cleaner, I guess, to use with their metals. Um, we've got enamel natural gray. Uh, another extreme metal uh, product, aluminum. Now these extreme metals, this is in a glass case too. Glass, not plastic, because I guess because it's uh, oil based. Um, but uh, we did get in some of their, uh, that was the other, that was, no, wrong one. Yeah, that's extreme metals for them. Uh, Meng Acrylic Thinner. Meng Perfect Cleaner. Lots of stuff here. Primer and Microfill are gray. This is in like a larger plastic bottle. I love these, these bottles, they're very well done. Uh, and then we have Gunmetal Extreme Metal. So uh, these the Extreme Metal series looks pretty interesting. Um, I'm just going to crack one of these and take a look on the inside real quick just to see how they... I think it's just a standard, yeah, just a standard paint. 
set up. Mm, ah, the oil base. All right, and then they've got a ton load of books here at the bottom. All right, so we've got uh, Ace Magazine Aces High, Silver Wings. Um, this, this is going to be a uh, series of projects um, headed up by um, Editor Management, uh, Kay Novak. And uh, looks good. And we've got uh, Metallics Volume 1. I don't know if this goes with their Extreme series. Let's just look real quick. I think it's just going to be, ooh, like, you know, metallics, metals, engines, and things. Uh, but yeah, it talks about oxidation. I'm actually using different paints, although I do see... No, that's pigments. Don't actually see these new paints in there. Maybe these were written before the new paints came out. Um, Italics Volume 2. And um, again, some nice nice uh, sci-fi fantasy pieces in here. We'll do uh, turning the pages on these guys and get a closer look at those. Uh, the Eagle Has Landed, Armor and Aircraft Diagrams by Ator Azku. I'm not sure. Is that a Turkish name? Don't you know? Just a guess on my part. Um, this is a diorama series book. Very nice. Uh, 200 and some odd pages, two, almost 300 pages it looks like. And uh, soft cover, but it looks really good. Then we've got uh, four by two, four modelers, four FEs, two variants, building, painting, and weathering. And this is by uh, Ruben Gonzalez, Sven Frisch, Frisch. Domingo Hernandez and Michael Perez, or Michael, Mich Mich Michelle, Mich uh, I'm not sure. You guys all should say Michael the same way, it's confusing otherwise. Thank you, Office, I don't have the latest version of Office. Uh, tanker Left to Rust, Extreme Rust. Um, this one is more of a magazine effect, but kind of a different projects again, different models, different projects. A lot of books. My goodness. They, this, is their, is this their whole range for the year? Tanker uh, Extra Armor. Buck Buick Max Apocalypse. Oh, that's the, uh, obviously the Road Warrior. Was it the Road Warrior? I know, I know what kind of Buick that is. I guess it's not. I guess it's just kind of a, a um, Road Warrior-esque vehicle. But yeah, lots of cool stuff in here for that kind of thing. And another one. Uh, Tanker... Dust and Dirt. This, so I guess this is a new magazine they're putting out. Techniques magazine. This is issue three, and that was issue two and issue one. So they sent me issues one through three. Um, so Tanker, and this one's uh, has uh, this is Dust and Dirt maybe theme, and with a Soviet Su one one twenty two on the front there, and another cool uh, looking looking uh, post apocalyptic vehicle. Um, oops, we're sliding. Don't slide. Uh, Naval Model Full Ahead Special, Lexington's Final Battle by um, Mer Mer Margin Mergen Mergen de Gills. That looks pretty neat. I mean, I don't know if you can see the photo there, but there's guys basically going down lines into the the boats as the Lexington obviously is sinking. Very nice. I'm uh, assuming that's a one three fiftieth diorama, but uh, just let me look here. I've got I got you know I'm I'm curious about these things. Uh, get to the right page probably for that. Nope. I'm guessing it is though. All right. Um, and we have uh, train spotting. Trains, locomotives, and train, locomotives, wagons, weathering oil and grease uh, dust. And this one is, um, it looks like in conjunction with Marklin. Uh, no authors listed on the cover here, but I'm sure they're probably on the inside jacket, I'm guessing. Maybe not. Probably projects by different different authors, different writers. But again, looks very cool. We'll definitely put that up on our Marana and railroad railroad modeling. A catalog. A catalog. Wow, their catalogs are really nice. This is like a book on itself. It's like uh, 200 pages, I think. They don't actually have page numbers on here, but it looks like it's about 200 pages. Uh, so yeah, the A the the A A K catalog with all their different new stuff. AFB series, war game series, figure series, naval series, air series, train series, diorama series, and sci-fi series. They pretty much got it all covered. Well, thanks very much AK Interactive for sending us this extremely heavy box FedEx. 
from Spain. I'm sure that was not cheap. Um, but we will definitely do our best to highlight and feature these pro products. For a lot of these paints and stuff, um, if you guys are interested in doing some kind of tutorial project or something incorporating uh, one of your builds, incorporating some of this stuff, contact me. I'll be very interested in, in uh, working with you on stuff like that because we really want to see these things um, reviewed or used, used really, I mean, in a, in a project. Because, you know, uh, how, do you, how do you do a review on, on one little paint thing? It just doesn't quite make sense. Um, I know I've talked about that before, but just to reiterate, where's my cutter? There it is. All right, so this one is from Stevens International. I'm guessing we're going to have a trumpeter kit in here, probably, or maybe an academy. No, not academy. We get that through MRC. Um, what else does Stevens send us besides trumpeter? I can't remember. I know they carry other stuff. It seems like we only get trumpeter stuff in them, though. Uh, of course, we have to request things, and that's one of the reasons why. Uh, okay. We don't get that. I guess maybe we did just request this. KV5. KV5 Super Heavy Tank. For those of you who play World of Tanks, this is definitely uh, a one for the uh, uh, for the collection. Uh, it's certainly, uh, as far as I know, this is a real thing, right? Real, real deal tank actually made and so forth, not just a prototype. Um, in the game, though, you just have to shoot at the little radio binnacle, operator binnacle there with the machine gun and you'll penetrate every time. So yeah, we'll uh, definitely be getting this one out uh, as well as taking a look at it. Um, I don't know one of those tanks actually. So PLA tank crew also from them in 135th scale. And uh, looking very nice here with the graphics in the back. These figures look pretty good from, I mean they're pretty static just, uh, poses, but they do look pretty good. All right, I think that's the contents of that one. And then lastly, a box from MRC. What's gonna be in here, I wonder? Place your bets. Uh, all right, more of their, um, more of these MSP, MCP uh, kits, or at least one of them anyways, is, the other one is I think a regular aircraft. This is the U.S. Air Force F-16C multi-role fighter. Now these are the mm, pre-colored snap tight kits, so you know you don't see a lot of play on our channel for these. Um, we will uh, still put them out there if someone wants to kind of do them maybe as a, a kind of, you know, early modeler, young, younger, entry-level modeler kind of thing. But, um, and then also we got the U.S. Navy uh, F-14A V-2 Bounty Hunters in 172nd scale. So I can't see my glare. I'm not sure you guys are getting the best uh, non-glare free image there, but uh, I kind of wish they would just send them without the plastic wrap. It's like, they're distributors. Just before you guys plastic shrink wrap them, just send them to us without the shrink wrap. There, see? Much better. All right, um, so... Uh, Yep, that was everything on that one. Yeah. Uh, so I went to go back to the computer that I do the, you know, some of my work at, and uh, there was another email. Yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> let's let's open these, shall we? Okay. Uh, this one, these are all, these are both from Dragon Models USA or Dragon USA, the distributor. They sell lots of nice kits besides Dragon kits. You can go to their website or if you're a hobby store, you can contact them and so forth. And uh, I'm gonna sneeze. Don't sneeze. Oops. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness. We'll edit that part out. Um, BZ38 Refueler, Mod 1939. Um, I had a similar release to this, but this is probably just a different variant. Unless it wasn't the BZ38, maybe it was a different refueler truck. Actually, no, I was going to say they, maybe they show some of the other ones, but they just show some other angles on the side here. So, And uh, this is obviously a mini art kit. Um, then we have a dragon kit, the M60A2 Starship. And that is uh, obviously the one with the little is the howitzer. Is that a howitzer? Short barrel? I'm not really that familiar with it, but uh, yeah, I'm sure people out there are. 
Again, 135th scale, that's a new kit just out. Not, not just out, but it's, no. And then we have the giant box. The giant box. Well, that's not that giant. I've actually got bigger boxes from them before, but not a whole lot bigger than this one. And occasionally, my mic cable is saying it doesn't want to go this far. I don't want to go this far. This is what happens when you get these tangly messes. Uh, anyways, but yeah, I've gotten two boxes at once, lar two fairly large boxes at once. That was, those were back in the heady days of even more kits from them than we get now. Although this looks like it's going to be quite a few. Um, we got in the British cruiser tank A34 Comet, 135th scale. Um, Darren gets a lot of these kits in as well, so we may already have this one out and about, but if not, uh, definitely take a, a gander for that one on our sample sheet if you're looking for something. Uh, another Bronco kit, a Panzer Camp Wagon 3 Offs A STKFC 141, also th 135th scale. Looks like a, a nice uh, A variant. Lots of plastic there. Oh wow, they sent us the 1350th. Ugh, Scharnhorst, 1941, German battleship. So that's a nice one. Uh, this one probably will be up to Todd to where, where it goes, but uh, I will confer with him on it. You can still send requests to me if you want, but then we can also go to Todd Michalak. Michalak, Todd, Todd Michalak. I'm going to get that right eventually. Um, if it kills me. Uh, we've got a 8.8 centimeter Flak 36 off Panzer IV off H. Uh, wow, that is... Interesting. That is practically the kit that I made a long time ago as, a, as just a, a kind of a paper panzer diorama thing. I made a, a panzer IV the chassis with an 88 millimeter on it. Didn't have this thing here with the seats built into it and so forth, but I actually had this flap system where I used the gun shield on it and the flaps folded down on each side so that it kind of like a, a uh, flat area to work to work to to do their gun crewy stuff on but that's interesting that's probably also maybe a single example or paper pans or kind of thing m48 a1 uh, 135th scale uh, again and this is uh, going off their these newer uh, m48 uh, was the wasn't the wasn't the a1 before what was they did release an m48 before this hadn't they anyways but that's uh, that looks interesting and that's a dragon model. Um, a SWS uh, two centimeter Flak Verling 38. That looks like a mean, mean machine there with the, just the, the way it has the elongated uh, uh, front section. It's almost like a cross between the, the Hanna Mag or the, you know, the, um, what do they call that series? Uh, anyways, back in the old days, we called it the Hanna Mag because that's what, it, that's what, the, the, that's what the, trump, the, the trumpeter, the Tamiya kit was. Uh, so anyways, this is 135th scale also. Um, pushing on. Uh, Mini Art US ammo loading tank crew. And uh, that's what they look like on the back. 135th scale. Uh, Whitman's Ace Tiger crew from Dragon. 135th scale. That's what they look like at the back. It's kind of nice. They're uh, actually doing the whole hands around kind of a photo pose. That's a very nice way to do it. I, ironically, the box art on this one, it does not look like it actually corresponds to the to the kit, uh, but the kit looks like they're, in, well, wait a minute, they're, now they're, yeah, yeah, they changed, they obviously changed it. So, cause they've got the picture down here for, for painting reference, but where they're obviously not holding each other's arms, unless they include both arms. It's possible, I guess they include both, but why wouldn't they have shown both? I mean, they showed these guys with their arms down, but then these guys have their arms around, so... Yeah, anyways, I think, I think it's just the one. But we can find out once we actually open it and look at it. Um, this is uh, H HF-11 Grofs Feldkutsch. Feldkutsch? No, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that in German. But anyways, obviously some kind of food wagon uh, and a horse carriage. Those are always interesting to put into the... The dioramas, because they did have a lot of horse-drawn carriages and stuff. It's amazing to think of the German army as highly mobilized, yet they still were using on horsepower to do a lot of their support stuff. Uh, so we got a CAMS kit here. This is the A4E12 late production VCL light amphibious tank in 135th scale. Um, another mini art kit, the 7.62 7 centimeter Flak 39 
uh, R, German field gun. I find that interesting that it's obviously 7.62 millimeter is an assault rifle or a AK rifle, but the, uh, this must have corresponded to something. Didn't it have to correspond with some older imperial measurement set? It just seems like it would have just equaled out to X amount of inches or whatever. Uh, anyways, um, so that's also one we got. And then we also got a Blom and Voss BVP 178 Nachjager, uh, Jaeger, Nachjager, uh, night fighting a version of the BVP-178. And Bronco has put out quite a few of these. I think this is gonna be the, what, be the fourth or fifth uh, P-178 variant that they put out. But you know, this is at least a noteworthy uh, variant. I don't know if it was a real deal thing. I would assume it was, but, uh, but yeah, interesting. And I believe that's it. So back to your regular scheduled programming. In other words, I'm gonna put the tail end of the video that I was yeah, where I didn't know I was going to get these boxes. Yes. All right. Well, uh, anything else I should cover this week? Uh, hmm, like I said, these two kits definitely. I'm going to try to get out those other remaining two that are on my uh, carryover project list, and a lot of books. And now that I have these AK books, boy, I have a lot of books. Please pardon the book explosion at some point on the channel that will happen. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I know the book. Or the, I know the book uh, turning the pages get a few less views than the kits do, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you guys seem to be um, liking those as well, so I'll keep doing them. Uh, if you have any feedback, comments, suggestions, please leave them below. Remember to hit the like button because I like that when you hit the like button. So if if you enjoy the channel, please uh, try, try to help support us. That gets the gets the video out there more on the recommended lists on the side of YouTube and all that stuff, and on our website, obviously. I don't have a lot of functionality built in for the likes functions yet, but eventually I will because I'm, I'm, I'm going to make, trying to make uh, programming new functionality a, uh, a thing for this year. I think I probably said that for 2015 as well, but the point is, is I'm still going to try to do it because, um, you know, this is the kind of catch-22 with this, with my business is that a lot of the, my time gets taken up by these samples now, um, but uh, back in the, the old days, most of my time got spent up by uh, trying to do programming and web development on the site and uh, increase functionality. So we have not, have not had a lot of new features added to the website in say the past four or five years, uh, which is ironic because that's one of the reasons I wanted to move to this office so that I could get away from home and get out of the, um, the distractions of being at home and so forth. Uh, but unfortunately our sample rates went up quite a bit over the last, uh, or five years as well. So, uh, but we like getting the stuff. So, you know, keep, keep sending the stuff and we'll keep putting it out there and letting, you know, hopefully our community uh, take a, you know, get a better use, look at it and so forth. Um, useful look, use, use, using, they will use the products and see what, how they like them and so forth. Um, other than that, I uh, hope you guys are having a great start to your April. We didn't do any April's Fool. Well, we did a few little April Fool's things, I guess. But we didn't do any, I didn't do any April's Fool stuff because uh, I just was enjoying all the other April Fool's things going on. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was interesting start to the, to the, the April. But uh, anyways, we will see you next time on Mail Call. Mm -hmm.